hit that subscribe button and the bell icon beside it to check out our latest videos before anyone else. Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is the unboxing of Oppo F7. Currently this phone is being sold in two variants in India. Base variant is priced at 22,000 rupees and comes with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. That's the one we have right now. And the next variant is priced at 27,000 rupees for 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. That particular variant is not available right now, but it will be available very soon. It is available in three colors, red, silver and diamond black. And I have the red color with us right now. So guys, this is how the box looks on the front. We have a quick preview of how the phone looks on the front. Above that, we have the phone's name, that's the F7 and the front facing camera spec, that is the 25 megapixel. Over here, we have the OPPO branding on the left side and on the right side, we have once again the OPPO branding. And at the back, we have some specifications like the 25 megapixel AI assisted selfie camera, 64 GB of RAM, 4 GB of RAM, design and 6.23 inch full HD plus display. Over here, we have some other specs along with a small tagline that says made in India over here. Now let's get on with the unboxing. For some odd reason that really took me a lot of time. Now this is the box that we get inside and there is another seal over here. Now let's just break that. So at the top we have the phone itself. Let me just put that aside for now. Next we have this cardboard box. And inside that we have some important guide information a quick start guide and a soft silicon case. Next we have a 10 watts power adapter that says made in China and yes this phone doesn't support fast charging and obviously doesn't come with any fast charger in the box. Next we have the micro USB charging cable. I know many people complain about the lack of type C port but companies choose micro USB for their convenience. It's a lot easier to find a micro USB charging port than a type C port these days at least right now in India. Anyway, next we have this earbuds which looks a lot like the Apple earpods and they also sound pretty good. Now these are all the things that we get inside the box. Now let me just put all these things aside and come back to the phone. So it comes with a nice plastic wrapping. Let me just remove that. So guys, this is how the phone looks on the back. And this is how it looks on the front. It comes with a tempered glass pre-applied like all the previous Oppo phones. Now let's have a quick physical overview and then check out the specs. By the way guys, inside this cardboard box, we also get the SIM card ejector, which I forgot to show earlier. On the front, it has a 6.23 inch Intel IPS display with Full HD plus resolution in the new 19 is to 9 aspect ratio, along with a notch at the top, housing a 25 megapixel front facing camera with f2.0 aperture, earpiece and some sensors. Below the display, it's completely plain. We don't have any capacity buttons. Instead, we have on-screen buttons. On the left side, it has the volume buttons. And on the right side, it has a SIM card tray along with the power button. This is how the SIM card tray looks. And it houses two nano SIM slots along with a dedicated SD card slot. At the top, it just has a microphone hole. And at the bottom, it has a speaker grill, a micro USB charging port, a microphone hole, and a 3.5mm audio jack. Now on the back, we have a super glossy finish made of plastic with a 16 megapixel primary camera with f1.8 aperture followed by a single LED flash, a fingerprint scanner and OPPO branding. Under the hood, it sports a MediaTek Helio P60 octa-core processor with 4 Cortex-A73 cores and 4 Cortex-A53 cores that's combined with a Mali G72 MP3 GPU. It is powered by a 3400 mAh battery and it is currently running Color OS 5.0 based on Android 8.1. It has all the basic sensors including compass, gyroscope, FM radio and a fingerprint scanner on the back. It also supports face unlock which is supposed to be super fast. We'll check that in a minute. It has a thickness of 7.8 mm and weighs just 158 grams. So guys this is how the phone looks with the case on. It has cutouts for the camera module, fingerprint scanner and the charging port at the bottom and the microphone hole at the top. It even has a raised lip on the front so whenever you put your phone directly on its face you won't scratch the display. It also has a slightly raised lip on the back to protect the camera module and help us easily reach the fingerprint scanner. Now let me just quickly configure the phone and see what we get right out of the box. So guys this is how the phone looks once we turn it on. As this is the red phone, this might be coming with some red theme. 
we might be able to go back to the stock or the default theme from the theme section. For now, let's see the amount of free RAM we get right out of the box. So out of the 4 GB of RAM, we get about 2.17 GB of free RAM out of the box. Out of the 64 GB of storage, we get about 49 GB for our user apps and user data. This phone is currently running Color OS version 5.0 based on Android 8.1.2. Now let's check out the camera interface. So this is how the camera interface looks like. Just like the previous Oppo phones, we can swipe left or right to change between the different modes. And even though this phone comes with only single camera on the back, it also offers portrait mode. On this phone, it's called depth enabled mode. This mode is completely software based, so edge detection won't be all that good. Now this is the front facing camera and we even have depth enabled mode or the portrait selfie mode over here. Once again, even this is completely software based but it should be working much better than the rear camera. Unlike the Vivo V9, we can only record video at a maximum of 1080p using the front and rear cameras. It also comes with manual mode, panorama, stickers and time lapse. This is the home screen, there is no app draw, so all the apps are thrown to the home screen. And on the complete left, we have a smart assistant, which simply lists various details like the weather information, step tracker and some quick shortcuts. Now let me just use this phone for some time and come back to you with my initial impressions. So guys coming to my initial impressions, design and build are pretty good but they have their own set of issues. On the back this has the super glossy finish, on the Vivo V9 it just has a glossy finish while on this phone it has a glossy finish along with a plastic layer at the top. That makes it lightweight but it will get scratched more easily than glass. That's a little downside and when we compare it to the Vivo V9 edges on this phone are kind of flat and bulky. So even though both phones have similar thickness, Vivo V9 feels much more sleeker than this phone. Even on the front, this phone is said to have almost 90% screen to body ratio, but when we compare it with the Vivo V9 side by side, Vivo V9 seems to be having a much bigger display with much smaller bezels. So this is what I felt based on my initial impressions. Now coming to the cameras, they are really good. Both the front and rear cameras come with Auto HDR, on the back, it also supports portrait mode, which is completely software based and the edge detection isn't all that good. Even for the front facing camera, it has support for portrait selfies. That actually works much better than the rear camera. It has a super vivid mode where images look super saturated. And it also has these stickers just like the Vivo V9. But unlike the V9, the selection and the number of stickers are very limited on this phone. These are some more sample shots. I'll be posting the camera review pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. Now coming to the performance, this phone packs a Helio P60 processor which is built using the 12 nanometer architecture so it's super power efficient and at least on the paper it is very powerful. In my usage so far, everything was super responsive and I didn't notice any lag whatsoever. I'll come back to you with more information in my complete review. Now coming to the fingerprint scanner and face unlock feature, they are super fast. Let me just give you a quick preview of the fingerprint scanner. As you have seen, fingerprint scanner is super fast, probably as good as any other flagship out there. Now coming to the face unlock feature, it is as fast as a fingerprint scanner. At least that's what I felt. Just look at it. I'm pressing the power button and it's not even showing me the lock screen. It is directly unlocking the phone. And it doesn't matter if there is low lighting conditions or whatever. I have tested it in all lighting conditions and it is super fast. Now let me just turn off the lights. As you have seen, it still unlocks the phone very quickly. Now unlike the Vivo V9 on the Oppo F7, we can make the video full screen on YouTube. So that really gives us a much more immersive experience. It still doesn't cover the notch, but you get a full immersive experience. Coming to the software part, this phone is loaded with a lot of cool features. Now this phone definitely tries to copy the iOS. It doesn't have an app drawer and icons look very similar to what we can see on the iPhone, but they have more the notification toggles in the notification area. So we have the notification toggles over here, unlike Vivo V9, which has it at the bottom. Now, it also has a lot of cool gestures for the navigation bar. And as you can see, navigation bar on this phone is currently hidden. I'm using the gestures. So I can swipe on the left side or the right side to go back. So here we go. And I can swipe at the center to go home. I can swipe and hold for recent apps. Now, it also has this bubble. I hope you can see that. You can do a single tap to go back, double tap for recent taps and long press to go home. We even have double tap to wake and V for torch, just like the OnePlus devices. 
and O for camera. So that's the camera. It also has features like ambient display and raise to wake. So when I wake up the phone, it simply looks at my face and unlocks the phone, which is super cool. So it has all these cool features and I have to see how it turns out in actual day-to-day -day usage. So far the device looks pretty good, especially the face unlock feature is insanely fast. Yes, it is overpriced for the specs it offers, but currently this is the cheapest phone in the Indian market to come with the new 19 to 9 aspect ratio and the display notch. Right out of the box, if we compare this phone with the Vivo V9, this phone lacks an LED notification light but comes with a bigger 3400mAh battery. On V9, you have a dual camera setup on the back so you get much better portrait shots and for some reason, display looks much bigger and more immersive on V9 and it feels sleeker and light in weight when compared to the F7. So guys, that was the unboxing of Oppo F7 along with a very quick comparison with the Vivo V9. By the way, if you are planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description, it really helps the channel. If you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to see more cool videos on tech. I'm Mikkel from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.